I know that everyone is wondering what the future of music looks like. As somebody who spent my whole life doing music for a living, and a lot of that time spent trying to adapt to the changes in technology in the business, I think about this every single day. But I almost didn't make this video because I don't have a crystal ball and I can't tell the future. But when I look at the comments in some of my videos and I see people saying things like, oh, why bother making music? And AI is gonna ruin everything. And oh, it's all so terrible. I, I just feel like I gotta say something because I don't agree. And I've got a different perspective. I also wanna talk about the business, the culture, how I see Ray of Light, and I've got some advice for young producers and artists. But first, let's get some perspective by looking at the past. For most of history, the only way you were gonna hear music is if there was a singer or musician standing right in front of you. And the only music you heard was if they were in your village or traveling through and they were playing something they wrote, or usually it was like traditional songs that were passed down through memory. During the classical period, there are very few ways to earn your living from doing music besides being under the patronage of a church or a king, and you would have to create and perform the music they wanted you to perform. You could give lessons to the wealthy, or if you really had your shit together and were massively talented, you could write operas and perform them and make some money. And there were star opera singers who did do well, but there were very few. They were the best of the best. It wasn't a normal thing. The percentage of people who have earned their living from making music has historically been pretty low. In the early 1900s, recorded music was made and sold, but recording artists the way we think about them today didn't exist till later with higher quality analog tape recording technology after World War II, which came from captured German tape recorders. And it was Bing Crosby who became the first major American singer to pre-record his radio broadcast and, so the story goes, the first to use laugh tracks. So even then, things are already becoming fake. <laughs> But the impact of recorded music was revolutionary. You could capture sound and store it and play it back and copy it with pretty high quality. And music had become this thing that you could sell on a massively scalable way for the first time ever. But now music is data and it is essentially free. And I wanna add this in, something that I've seen change in my lifetime and that is, when I started out in music, a music career was not seen as a sensible thing. If I had told somebody I was an artist trying to get a record deal, they'd be like, hmm, okay. And that's because it wasn't a sensible thing, but shows like American Idol have convinced people that it's a reasonable career move, but it never has been. However, for those of us crazy enough to do it, the music business worked the same way for decades. You could get a record deal, a publishing deal, and even if you didn't have a hit, the advance money was pretty good. And there are plenty of jobs for producers, engineers, musicians, songwriters, and music industry people as well. But you had to fit into the system. There were no alternatives. There were clearly defined genres with established marketing plans, and you had to fit that mold if you wanted to have any chance of getting a record deal. And if you're over 27, forget it. There were gatekeepers at every step that you had to deal with, and if you didn't, there you just you you just did it their way, or you didn't do it at all. Now, before anyone says, "Oh, there is always an indie scene with indie labels," hey man. They were just mini versions of the major labels with their own uh, attitudes and you had to fit their mold. Now, if you were an independent artist putting out your own music independently without a record label, it was virtually impossible to get your records into stores or mainstream radio. But if you could fit into the system, you could have a career. And the music business thrived because it was ubiquitous. Besides TV, it was the main entertainment media in your home, and you could take it with you in your car or on a portable cassette player. And we lived in a monoculture. We were all looking at the same thing. Even if you weren't a country music fan, you would somehow know who the biggest star was. Music was easily served up to the masses, but now music has to compete. You've got these amazing immersive video games. You've got, you know, social media, movies and TV streamed into your living room, and of course, YouTube. Music is now just something to consume or is something part of something bigger. And the music industry failed to anticipate this and develop any kind of technology or any kind of systems to bring it into the future, so it just went driving straight off the cliff. But even though that almost destroyed me, I was happy to see it go. For the sake of art, it was a cycle that needed to be broken. However, the music industry has not been rebuilt as much as it has been co-opted by big tech companies and investment firms, and record labels are no longer leaders. They are marketing machines for established artists, or they find some TikTok flash-in-the-pan sensation that they just pump for short-term gain. 
And for my American viewers out there, music is becoming more international. We're no longer the automatic cultural leader. There's this Turkish cafe I go to and they're usually playing international music and I'll sound hand a song. It'll be something from India or Turkey or Africa and it'll have a billion views on YouTube. So get out of your bubble. Yet we're all being broken into smaller and smaller silos. There is no monoculture anymore. And there are no genres anymore, and music is ceasing to be ubiquitous. So there are no roadmaps, there are no guidelines in the music business anymore because there is no cohesion. But the real threat and danger to the future of music, and the thing that we're all worried about is AI. AI listens to existing recorded music, analyzes it, chops it up, and spits out replicas based on the sweat, toil, and creativity of human beings in a matter of seconds. Now, I know that some of you are going to say, well, that's how humans learn, too. They copy something, and that's how they figure out how to play music and all that. And it's like, whatever, man. Yeah, that's true. But here's the difference, man. It takes humans years to do that. And when they do that, no matter how much they copy something, it's still going to come out as an original new piece of music, even if it's crappy, because their personality and their creativity is going to be put on it to some degree. But AI is going to do all this in a matter of seconds, and there's going to be nothing new about it. And I know that some of you are using AI to help make songs, and I get it. But even though the record labels have said that they're working out deals with the AI companies to use their recordings with permission and supposedly pay everybody, I've got songs out there that I co-own across multiple record labels and I've yet to receive any kind of communication asking for my permission or telling me what I might get paid and I don't know anybody else who has. And these AI companies are taking music and ingesting it that they don't have permission for. It is just stealing. And AI is going to take jobs away from people in the music industry. Pretty soon and it's going to be dominating the music you hear in grocery stores, bars, restaurants, uh, commercials, YouTube videos, not this one, uh, you know, video games. And record labels will be using AI instead of artists because they're not going to want to pay royalties and things like that. So what is the future of the music industry? Well, I think it's going to suck. But it kind of always has. In fact, for the last 25 years, I've felt like this. Gentlemen, it has been a privilege playing with you tonight. But I'm still here. And I've got a prediction. I think music's going to split. On one hand, there's going to be AI music. And it'll have its place because there are a lot of passive music listeners who won't notice or care. And on the other side, there'll be music made by humans for people who do notice and do care. And, and the reason, reason I believe that is because of three things. I went for years without recording any live drums at all and hardly any live instrumentation besides the things that I was adding to tracks. And yes, I tend to do more urban and pop music, but man, we used to do that stuff all the time back in the day. And then about 10 years or so ago, I noticed that more and more people were bringing in drummers and live musicians, and it's only been growing to the point where I've just added 16 mic lines to my living room upstairs. I've got this big living room up there because the drums sound great up there. And live music has become a lot more popular again, and acoustic music is just exploding right now. The infamous String Dusters, who I've made three albums with, have only become more popular since I met them and are touring all the time. And Billy Strings, an acoustic guitar player playing bluegrass, is playing arenas across the world. And the reason I think this is happening is because in this increasingly robotic world we live in, people want a connection with real people playing real music. I don't spend hardly any time with anybody close to my age. Most of the people I work with and know are a lot younger than me, and their passion for music is pretty incredible. They've turned me on to so much good music, and even though they sometimes call me Boomer, I gotta tell you, I, I like these kids a lot. They give me a lot of hope. And probably the biggest thing for me is you, the commenters. I know I've said this before in another video, but y'all care. Y'all care more than I, I thought I would get on this YouTube channel. You know, I've been in this business a long time. I do know a lot of stuff about music. And of course, this all comes from my perspective. But y'all are taking me to task. I've got people in here like making me study. I've spent so much time in the last month reading and going lis and listening to music. And, and I like that. I like the challenge. But it's also the growth in me with the things I'm learning. It's because of y'all. And I just want to say thank you so much. It's nice to know that music is important to so many. So thank you. Thank you so much. Now, back to the subject at hand. To my fellow creators out there, don't despair. Hold steady. 
Because even though things are going to get a little messy out there, I want you to think about this. While there's all these people out there making AI music, you know, they type a couple things in and poof, oh, they got music. I mean, what are they going to do after that? As anybody knows, the actual music creation part of having a music career is actually just a small percentage. You actually have to go do things. You can't just make the music and sit around. And if they even do stick with it, how are they going to perform? And yes, record labels will make their AI artists. I mean, this has been going on in J-pop and K-pop for years, but do you listen to that stuff? Do you make that kind of music? Has it destroyed the music business? And in many ways, things are better now than during the golden age of the music business. For instance, you don't have to be under 27 to have a music career anymore, which is great for me because I'm only 29. There are no overriding trends or musical genres anymore. You don't have to limit yourself. In fact, the more original you can be, the better. And contrary to the crap that the record labels drilled in our head that, oh, people, they're not sophisticated enough to like different types of music, they were wrong. People like all different types of music. So if you can find your audience, you can build a fan base. There are no gatekeepers stopping you from creating, releasing, and promoting your music to the world. There are several artists who I've watched build a following online and grow to the point where they are doing national tours. Maybe you could do that too. So stop looking at the crowd and stop listening to the noise. Comparison is the thief of joy and it's a waste of time. So you focus on you and forget the rest. Now, here's what little advice I can give you with my limited future telling abilities. It's going to get a lot more crowded out there. So you're going to need to be good in every way that you can and be unique and entertaining. Find the thing that you can do best, whether it's singing, musicianship, or your personality and make that the anchor and build everything around that. No one is going to come find you and no one is going to discover you. You need to reach out to the world and find your audience and also find allies, other creators that you can collaborate with and thus multiply your efforts. And you don't have to be making stupid music to gain traction on social media. So start putting out more music and videos. Tell your story. Connect with your audience. You're going to need to be able to perform and tour. If you have no experience performing, go out and do some gigs at local bars and dives to get some experience where it won't matter if you have a bad show. Just get some stage time. While it makes sense to release each song one at a time to extend your music's exposure and give you more content, all those songs should be released as an album together. It defines a stage in your career and gives you a theme to market a tour around. Do not put all your eggs in one basket by focusing on one platform. Make sure you are on every platform that you can handle because these algorithms change and they can screw you up. More importantly, start steering your fans to non-algorithmic platforms where you have control over how it works, such as your own website, Patreon, Discord, or like me, I do all of them. And don't waste your time trying to get a record deal. Until you have some success of your own, none of them are gonna give you the time of day. And before you get to that point, your first music industry relationship should be with a good lawyer. And find yourself a respected and vetted consultant who has experience in your kind of music. And finally, remember, if you want to do this for a living, you are creating a business and you're going to need to build a team. And if you do it right, you can make a good living and have a career. So what is the future of music and should we be worried? Well, nobody knows what the future is and you've heard my predictions. And yes, we should all be worried. But remember, we make the world that we live in. Are we going to support human-made content? Are we going to support originality? Are we going to support live music? It really is up to us. So that's all I've got right now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And remember, always be unique.